This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. You look good. Thank you. My name is Gare, I'm 29. And my name is Chantel and I'm 26 and we both live in Omak, Washington. Gare is my boyfriend and we've been together for almost four years. What I love about Chantel is that we can be ourselves. She is my best friend. We do everything together. And without her in my life, it would be a lot more depressing. Thank you. Thank you. Right now, me and Garrett are addicted to fentanyl and meth. Garrett and Chantel definitely fuel each other in the whole situation. I don't know if they're addicted to each other's company or more so just the using, but I don't believe Garrett and Chantel would be together without the drugs. I don't know what Chantel sees in Garrett. I've asked myself that a million times. I've even asked her that, but I never get an answer. I think right now it's just someone to do drugs with. It takes over your life. Once you're using it, everything revolves around fentanyl. We use anywhere from 10 to 20 pills a piece every day. We also use meth, and we probably do about a half gram a day. We just use meth to wake ourselves up because the fentanyl pills pass us out so much. I believe Gare has been addicted to some form of drugs for upwards of 10 years. I think Garrett's been numbing the pain of a lot of things he's experienced and I just don't think Garrett has the coping skills to face a lot of the traumatic issues that have happened in his life. Physical changes I've noticed in Garrett, definitely his gray hair. He's pretty much completely gray now. He's skinnier, and his drug use is on a steady downhill slope. I thought it was just THC, marijuana, so on and so forth. Had no idea that it was progressively getting worse. I've noticed a lot of changes in Chantel's physical appearance because of the drug use, the weight gain, the weight loss. She does have a lot of little sores and stuff on her face. And her teeth are pretty much gone. Yeah, it makes me feel really embarrassed. It sucks. <laughs> it's pissing her off right now, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> the last three years, Chantel's been arrested at least two times that I'm aware of and she ended up with a felony for identity theft, for check cashing. To pay for drugs, Chantel has done a lot of rotten things. She's stole money from me, she's stole money from the whole family. I mean, God only knows what she's done for money. I don't like to think about it. I help Garrett and Chantel financially every month, even though I'm just on a fixed income. I give him money to do yard work, and that doesn't get done. The sickness really sucks. I wish I would have never taken that first hit and gotten into it. It's not good. It's not the life I wanted to live. Garrett was a cute baby. He was big. He was eight and a half pounds. Garrett and I were always basically hand in hand everywhere we went. Hunting, fishing, hiking, being out in the mountains. We learned a lot of stuff from my dad. It got us to be a lot closer but life was pretty rough, I guess you could say, growing up, it's, it wasn't normal at all. <laughs> Their dad and I had a very volatile relationship. There was physical abuse, there was mental abuse, but we also used together. My mom's also an addict and my dad was too. Addiction was pretty prevalent in our lives. Ever since I could remember, they were both addicted to cocaine. The cocaine is what destroyed our relationship. And Garrett was four and a half when her dad and I broke up. Once my parents split up, we moved around quite a bit, going house to house, school to school. For over eight years, it was unstable. It made me feel pretty scared. I needed my parents to be there more for us. It wasn't normal, that's for sure. And I got into smoking weed around 13 or so because my mom smoked every day. I even found their cocaine once and tried that when she had one of her slip-ups. 
I actually thought, and I hid that from them. But as they got older, my boys would snoop around in my things and find it. I eventually ended up starting smoking weed with her, too. That got me into trying out other things. Basketball and baseball would have been his route into college. But after he joined high school sports and started hanging out with the older kids, he was introduced to opioids and painkillers. When I was a junior in high school, OxyContin got introduced to me through the guys on the basketball team that were really good. So we were thinking it was cool. That's when I got addicted. Like at the end of my junior year, I was smoking OxyContin close to every day. His grades went down. His attendance in sports started to go down. I barely graduated high school. Yeah, it was all downhill from there. After he graduated from high school, he was enrolled in community college, but his drug usage had increased so much that he didn't go to college. When Garrett was 19 years old, our dad passed away. Yeah, it was really sad. I guess I just didn't want to feel anything anymore. I was really messed up in the head. I was really sad, so I just wanted to do nothing but numb the pain. And after that, through the years, I've had to bury a lot of friends, a lot of family members. Having so many losses back to back really takes a toll. The way I've always coped is just numbing my feelings. Right now, me and Garrett are living together in a home owned by his family friend. She's like really lenient when we don't have like enough for rent. Like she'll let us do like work for her, like out at her house, like cleaning out her chicken coop or you know, like stuff like that. We've been living here for I think like five months now. What makes this room feel like home to me, I think just all the pictures I have, different memories and stuff, just makes me feel good. I never dreamed that Chantel would be like she is now and all the problems and just not care about anything or anybody. That's just not her. Chantel was happy, happy girl. My relationship with my mom was pretty good. She made sure that we got like what we wanted or what we needed and was always there for the most part. But my dad, he hasn't been in my life since I was probably, I think like six months old. It was just better that he not be in the picture. Me and my mom raised Chantel. When my mom was working a lot, she'd drop us off at my grandma's house. So like, me and my grandma were really, really close. She was always around. Grandma's been in her life a lot. She went to school, plays, Christmas concerts, stuff like that. So she was very much involved in her everyday life. Chantel did really good in school. You know, in high school, she was involved in cheerleading and volleyball. She's pretty social. When I was a teenager, I was around alcohol and weed most of the time, but I didn't use harder drugs. When Chantel was about 16, she started dating a guy who she seemed pretty happy with. We had a lot in common. He's really supportive and like I loved him. I graduated high school early and I made a move to Spokane and I had a really good career going for myself. Me and my boyfriend worked together for about five years. And then when I had just turned 21, he ended up cheating on me <laughs> in our house with my friend while I was sleeping. Their relationship coming to an end impacted her a lot. It felt horrible. Like it was really hard to like accept the fact that, you know, when you're with someone for so long and then stuff like that happens like unexpectedly. Like I just felt really heartbroken. Her grandma was her world. She'd tell her grandma things that she'd never tell her mom. It was really hard losing her. Sorry, I get super emotional when I talk about my grandma. Just her whole life got turned upside down. I think it was only like a month and a half after she passed away that I tried heroin. I had this one friend come over and she was into heroin. We were pretty close friends and she made it look like it wasn't that bad. I was still like dealing with a breakup. I had just lost my grandmother. I was just feeling really hurt and just wanted to forget everything. 
When I took the first hit of heroin, I felt like numb. From there, I just started doing it every day after that. Her drug use was progressively getting worse. And before you know it, it was too late. She had gotten herself in trouble, lost her job. She ended up homeless. So I moved back to OMAC. It was harder to get heroin here in OMAC, so I slowly just switched over to fentanyl. At that point, I was like, well, it's, everything can't get much more messed up. And like slowly just ended up losing everything. I was hoping that maybe it'd get tough enough or she'd smarten up and say, hey, I need to, something needs to change. Shut up, wake the f up. Good. So when I moved back to OMAC, I met Garrett because he was supplying me with heroin. We didn't instantly connect, but Chantel's overdose brought us closer. Garrett gave me the heroin. I did too big of a shot, and I don't really remember much. Here's this girl that I just invited over to my house, and she starts turning blue. I started freaking out. It scared the out of me. He's the one that actually saved my life. And afterward, he comforted me, and I could tell like he was really freaked out about the situation. It made me realize what life would be like without her and how much I liked her and I wanted to be with her. My family feels like we are definitely dependent on one another. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really gonna argue with that. <laughs> but we see each other growing old together, having kids. We talk a lot about having kids and uh, getting clean together and living life like we're supposed to, and like adults. Hey, Garrett. Hey, guys. Chantel. Hi. Hi. Do you want to come around here? Come on. Well, guys, uh, my name is Zach. This is Mike. Hey, guys. And uh, we're both substance abuse professionals. And today, we want to have a conversation about your drug addiction. There's a lot of love in this room for you on both sides. Chantel, I love you past the moon and the stars. You're kind, silly. And when you love, you love with your whole heart. <laughs> You've always been very special to me, and I hope you have always felt that. And I hope you see the love and support you have to help you through anything. I only wish the best for you, and hope that you see this as an opportunity that can change your life for the better. I love you. Thanks, Jody. Jason. Chantel, I remember when we, when we were a lot closer. We used to take a lot of trips together. I would give anything and make more memories like that. Your addiction has taken my little sister away, and that worries me. I love you. Chantel, I'm writing you this letter from my heart. We have lost our way and missed a way I could fix things when you were little. Moms always have a way of fixing stuff and making things better. I know you're worried about me being sick. The best thing you can do for me if this were my dying wish, is for you to fight for your life as well and accept this life-changing gift and fight with me so we can both have lots more time to enjoy life as it should be. So please, please, would you fight with me? I love you so much, and we can do this together. Love, Mom. I'm, I'm asking you to accept this gift that they're offering you. Please fight with me. Where would this be? And we would leave today. I don't know. I need to go step outside. I think they went to use in the porta potty. I'm here for you, baby. So this might be the last hurrah. You guys ready to finish up? Okay, come on. Here, I always think about the endless amount of the time we spent together as kids, hiking, fishing, hunting, how much fun we had. You are missing out on bonding with my daughters as their uncle. 
I love you, and I can't wait for you to be a part of our lives once again, Garrett. Okay. Connie, I know you took some time to write something down, too. Yes. My dear son, Garrett, who I love more than life itself. I became very frightened and spent a lot of time worrying about what can I do for you? How can I help you? Especially when I'm an addict, too. You have so much to offer in the way of things that would make you happy in your life. And I can't wait for the day to see my son smiling in his head and his eyes clear as he gets to enjoy life with his girlfriend who is going to be clean too. And I so much want that for you, Garrett. I mean, I'm gonna ask you, please, please accept this help. Will you accept going to treatment? Are, are, you, are you accepting the offer? Yeah. Yep, yep. Chantel? Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. Great. Yes. Oh, I love you so much. This place is amazing. I need you. I need you so bad. It's not going to be easy. But she's got it. Just stay strong. Oh, you're going to take care of him, honey. And they're off. A blessing. It is. The journey has been real so far. I haven't felt these emotions I've been feeling in a long time. My first few days, I was really lost. And then finally, Mike Diamond gets on the phone, and he's like, hey, man, you don't got to, like, I got Chantel on the phone. And she's like, I'm in the hospital right now. They woke me up. It's an ultrasound, I'm seven weeks pregnant. So like right then and there, I made the decision like, okay, like we gotta do this. I mean, it's win it now. Been sober for 95 days and I feel really good. I have self-confidence again, but it feels nice to feel my feelings and not be numbing them. Going into treatment knowing I was pregnant was scary, but finding out I was gonna be mother definitely motivated me a lot more. So these are pictures from my sonogram. So that's her. I'm 20 and a half weeks. Me and Garrett are still together. We would write letters to each other, so we'd get them like every other week, and then we had like three Zoom calls with each other. Learning to know who Garrett is sober, I'm really excited for it, but I'm also kind of nervous at the same time. But I'm really excited for our future. plans are going to Portland to stay with my sister and trying to find a job and just trying to get ready to have a baby. Hi. Hi, Mo. I am really excited to see Chantel. But yeah, I'm really nervous. My hands are sweaty. Freak my armpits are sweaty. Like, dude, yeah. <laughs> Babe! Hey! Oh, I miss you so much. I miss you. Yeah. <laughs>